Now we're going to jump into our spotlights um, of awesome new things to highlight. First and foremost, Boost GA release. Brenda, tell us more. Hello, everyone. Um, really excited to share more about Boost. Um, I know we've been talking about it for a while, but really briefly for those who forgot what it was or haven't heard of it before, um, it's a tool um, for storage providers to easily manage data onboarding and retrieval on Spotlight Network. And you can do things like, you know, have greater visibility into your um, deal-making pipeline with a new web UI. Um, you have a really lightweight client for proposing deals, so you don't have to run your full Lotus node. Um, you can also make storage deals with HTTP, HTTP data transfer and more. So um, yeah, there's lots more in the docs that you can go and click from there. Um, so super excited to um, yeah share that we can actually, uh, or that we have launched Boost as of last Wednesday. So for those of you who don't know, please go read about it. Um, in Earlier in the Bedrock update, you'll have a link to the blog post um, that you can read as well. So that's super exciting. Um, just sharing really quickly for what's next. We want to push adoption of Boost across storage providers, especially those that are onboarding data. But um, eventually, we do want to have a path to sunset and duplicate le legacy markets. So um, yeah, next, we're going to basically push adoption um, for storage providers, share more broadly across the ecosystem that we're moving all the market's capabilities to Boost. And we also want to have measurable ways to um, see how this is basically helping the data onboarding rate. Um, also, we want to build and design for scaling Boost. If you know storage providers that have input um, on this, please point them to that link there in the slide. Um, we have a discussion going on in GitHub there. Um, and I think it's one of the biggest, like, I guess, pieces of feedback from the storage provider ecosystem. So if you, if you know, please point them there to provide input. And also we want to develop and launch retrieval capabilities next. So yeah, thanks everyone for the hard work. Um, shout out to Dirk, Anton, Arsh, who also worked on this, um, Jake, obviously, and Mayank, who actually is like dedicated Bedrock TSD now, and he's been helping us a ton with support, troubleshooting, issues, triage, and improving docs. So that's been super helpful. Um, yeah, thanks everyone. And uh, stay updated for more um, boost releases in the future. Awesome. Thank you, Brenda. Jennifer for Lotus H2 Roadmap. Lotus, uh, we are, what's Lotus? In case anyone doesn't know, it's the reference implementation for the Falcon Network. The team, our team's mission and goal is basically keep Falcon Network running and keep improving it so that the Falcon Network can be useful. We also want to enable storage providers to provide a, a lot of like uh, storage services for the network for all those amazing data. And we also want to enable developers to build their own business and applications tooling and everything on top of Falcon or like on Lotus so that uh, users can actually use uh, Falcon for fun stuff. Uh, so, to do all those things, we have a lot of things to do. So we have done our H2 planning, which is now public. I have a link there. If you want to see all the details, click on that. Uh, we can talk about like Q3 priorities like for now, because things like keep changing. Uh, first, we have to keep uh, continue like working with our friends at FEM team to make sure that M1 goes uh, really well, maintenance, uh, maintain that and make sure that if anything needs support for M2, we're going to be there. We're also going to develop like network V17, which will be mainly work with Crypto Net Lab, a, pro a protocol opportunity team to enable low and storage market programmability, um, just like uh, for upon FEM M2. We're also going to be working on Split Store, which is uh, built on uh, Vizos work. Uh, that's to help with chain management. And we want to ship that in like production for our users. Uh, we're going to look at signature domain separation so that for user contract, we can handle all those uh, securely in the network. We also want to improve our ceiling pipeline so that it can scale uh, scale enough to work with like booths and also maybe build city as a service uh, for the storage providers we want to ship our v1 api has a lot of improvement on our gateway apis also support some like you know fem m2 maybe evm json rpc apis with it so that developers can deploy their smart contracts and improve uh, 
integrate with that. Uh, we also want to ship a like kind. However, currently we don't really know how we want to do that yet. So if you know anyone has like previous experience on implementing like kind for blockchain, please let us know. We would love to chat with them. Uh, we are also going to do a series of like short tutorials and workshops so that like Lotus become easier for people to use because like it's a very complicated system and software. Uh, a lot of things to do, but we are a relatively small team, so we are hiring a lot. So if you know any good EMs, software engineers, or technical support engineers, please send them our way. Uh, and that's it. Oh, and also one more thing, uh, we are still planning for our Q4 power test. So if you have anything that might need like Lotus attention, please reach out to me, Jenny Juju, our following Slack. Super great. Follow along closely. Over to Vic for the latest FIP from Crypto Econ Lab. Hi, everyone. Um, Juan, Molly, and Crypto Econ Lab have posted a FIP discussion uh, to introduce a sector duration multiplier for longer term sector commitment. Um, the kind of idea is that since longer term deals and storage commitments to the network are more in line with the network's goal to store humanity's most useful data, and because SPs take on increased liquidity and operational risks in storing deals slash committing capacity for longer, uh, we want to reward that with a multiplier on their you know, on their QAP. So, you know, similar to how Bill Plus introduces a verified deals multiplier, which rewards SPs for storing useful data, um, this FIP introduces a duration multiplier to reward SPs for committing their resources to the network for longer. Um, I've linked the discussion in, in the PowerPoint, so please feel free to provide your thoughts, provide input, suggestions, or questions. Um, and uh, we're, we're, we're continually iterating on this, on, on this FIP, and, and we want to get this out there soon. Woohoo! Everyone take a look and add your thoughts and questions. Um, thanks to the folks who already did. Over to Russell for the pinning service compliance checker. Thanks, Molly. So everyone, just first up, this is very noisy and I know that, but these GIFs all loop multiple times. So you can watch those as I continue talking about all of the items. So uh, pinning service compliance checker, what is it? Uh, there are multiple pinning service providers and uh, we want to make sure that they're all providing the same sort of support to our users. Uh, you can read a lot more in the launch announcement about the history and how it came about, but um, why did we need this? Uh, the spec was the only thing for services to base their implementations on. No client existed. There is now. You can check that out, um, which can exacerbate feature disparis disparity, which you can see in the different reports and where some services are failing compliance and passing. Um, so now we can try and align them better. A uh, huge shout out to Lawrence and Daniel. My time is up. Awesome. Well, everyone can look at the gifts and see the amazing work that, that has been happening here. Um, some great quotes as well. And over to Ecosystem. Mosh, tell us about all of the cool stuff that's been happening in Ecosystem Working Group. Hi, I'm Mosh uh, from the Ecosystem Working Group. Our mission is to see the long-term growth of the decentralized web. Um, we're cultivating a wide variety of stakeholders, aligning them with the success of IPFS, Filecoin, and the P2P, and treating them like gold. Okay, so what does that mean? In the past couple of weeks, our team's been really, um, really active. Uh, the big event this week is NFT NYC. Um, we're doing events, uh, running community uh, meetups, um, and doing a lot of business development. So how... Do how does going to parties translate into 68 million NFT stored? Um, well, uh, a lot of the relationship building, all, a lot of the founders and relationship building and, and even the technical decision making is happening in these really, really informal forums. So unlike any other vertical where you can do business development on email and Zoom calls, this is all happening in chats and events and 9 a.m. dance parties. Um, and so that's where we build some great relationships, um, you know, then follow up afterward, uh, debug any technical integration questions or, you know, scaling questions or, or issues you know, with retrieval performance or anything like that, really go um, use through our 360 tools to help them succeed. Um, and our focus on this pipeline has yielded, I think, uh, seven, uh, major partners, that's co um, companies or projects with seven to 10 um, figure market caps. Um, and, you know, all of those become multipliers that then enable lots of other builders and creators to use those platforms to, to create um, new content on the decentralized web. Another thing that's been really exciting is the 1 million uh, grant program um, announcement for Filecoin Green. This is focused on, um, uh, uh, you know, any sort of uh, 
software project, instrumentation project, um, uh, experiments um, towards making blockchains verifiably sustainable. Um, and then a, a huge announcement is um, the Brave wallet now has native Filecoin support. And Brave um, is kind of the uh, leading edge of Web3 native browsers. And you can now do all sorts of uh, great things with your Brave wallet, um, including uh, creating and managed Filecoin wallets, importing from Ledger, send and receive file tokens directly from Brave. So really exciting. Um, we have some more things coming up soon. Uh, funding the commons at the end of this week, um, the outlier and tachyon accelerator demo days, the links to sign up to, up to those are there. Um, you can meet some of the um, really, you know, kind of most exciting and um, high potential startups building companies and businesses on top of our technology. Um, most of these are remote demo days, so it's easy to dial in or have it playing in the background. Um, and then our Orbit Ambassador Program is hosting a number of events all around, all around the globe. Lastly, but not least, we're um, building relationships and, and lining up a bunch of uh, infrastructure and hosted node providers for Filecoin and FEM. Um, if you have any needs or requirements or suggestions for what those uh, hosted node, node providers should do, please talk to me or better yet, Eva, so we can build those into the contracts and negotiations. Thanks. So much cool stuff happening around the ecosystem. Thank you for the update.